Hi guys, Graham here at Crestron and today I want to take you through some little differences between a point-to-point -point call and a Teams meeting. So here I have two systems and what I'm going to do is set up the call and we'll dial in. We'll see what we can do on a point-to-point -point call but then jump to a Microsoft Teams meeting. We'll create an invite, get a join now button and then see the little differences. So let's check it out. We've got our two systems and now let's do a call between them. So what I can do is start a call from here and I can type in the details and because these are cross tenants, I need to invite it. So Federation is open between these two. And we simply accept the call. And there we have it. So I have now connected. I'm actually sharing content. We can stop that as well, because we'll talk about that in a second. We'll just hit disable over there. So that will stop sending content to the other side. And obviously you can see me here now. It doesn't stop content showing in your local preview. To do that, you just need to unplug the cable. And then we get our video both ways. So there we go, that's me. It is real. What do we have within the platform? So if we look at the center of room console, there is some slight differences. So on the top one, I don't have Cortana enabled. I've got that in the bottom corner, as you can see over there. You can see the Cortana button so I can do uh, gestures that way. I've got my camera button, my mute button, and obviously share content if that's plugged in. And then I have my more button. So I can click on here and I can do the live captions. So I can put close captioning on. So when I'm speaking, that is coming through. And when I talk, as you can see, it puts it puts it down the bottom, so it's nice to be inclusive in meetings there with that feature. You can also um, have room control. So, for example, Crestron, you can have that PTZ control or full room control. Chat bubbles. So, if someone does type a message, now this won't happen obviously with two meeting rooms uh, in a call. However, it could happen if someone is called on their cell phone, mobile phone. So they may send a chat. Then that will appear on the front of room display. We can turn off video. We can put someone on hold but also room remote, so controlling that room. So they are all the features you can get. And as I mentioned, plug in a cable. I can then view the content, and then that is then sent to the far end. Now again, this is a setting within the uh, Teams room. Do you want to automatically send message, uh, content during a call? So that's it, that's all the features we have. Uh, you will see we now do have a gallery button uh, on here. So when I do click that layout button, I can now choose, do I want content and people, content only, or I can have people only. So you get these choices when you have that content uh, in a call. I much prefer, obviously, content and people. We see everyone on the screen, but we also see our content. Now, this is single display, very similar with dual display as well. And there we have it. Again, we've got a little icon showing us that we have the closed caption enabled just on the clock next to there to see how long we've been in a call. There we have it. They are the features uh, of a call between a room and a room. So why not let's do a call directly with my personal self and we'll check out the chat bubbles as well. So let's tear that call down. And that returns everything to normal and we can stop presenting. So again, we'll do a new meeting. So we'll do exactly the same. search my name this is going to be an internal call so this is now ringing room number two will answer that and we'll start video so there we have a point-to-point -point call and again we've got the same features here start and stop our video our volume buttons and then if we look at the more button we had the similar controls. So now let's check out the chat bubble feature. So we'll go to chat on my phone and send a message. Hi, everyone. And let's see that pop up on the top of the message. So you can see that on the screen now. So again, a great feature. So if you are on that point to point call with someone on their desktop or mobile, then you've got that there. You've also got the option to turn that off, obviously. And we still have live captions. This is another feature, PTZ controls, which is an app you sideload. I've not worked out how to use that one yet. Uh, but you've got your room control as well. And we've obviously got dial pads. So if you want to add someone in on the mobile, you could escalate the call and uh, bring it up. And obviously, room remote. So again, I can share from here. So from my um, device, my mobile device, 
I can pick a previous image. So let's have a look at um, actually somewhere where I was at the weekend. So I was in Oxford in, in the UK. Uh, I wasn't attending university, uh, but I was looking around them. I uh, had a lovely tour, great city to go and see. But again, been able to share from my mobile device uh, into the Teams room. And vice versa, I'm able to do that as well. One of the other features is, once you're in a point-to-point -point call like we are here, is escalating that to a Teams meeting. So we can get that extra functionality. So I can simply tap on the invite someone to the call at the very, at the very top. And I can put in that name. So let's invite um, another room. Let's get room number four, for example. Now that's escalated that to a uh, meeting now. Let's answer the call. And there you can see we're in the call now and we have some new options on the touch panel that you'll see in the next part of the video when we see Microsoft Teams meetings. So there we have the features of a point to point call. Now let's switch gears, schedule a call and we will do a Teams meeting. So here we have a call. We've uh, scheduled a few friends. So these two Microsoft Teams rooms. And I've got uh, another one lined up, plus a Zoom room as a guest join access. And I've got my desktop client. So let's join in with the desktop client uh, through the browser. So they are the main host of the meeting. And we'll click join. And I need that because obviously we've got a lobby. So that's something you don't need to do when you're in a point to point call. You obviously just have that call. So what we can do is then jump to this system here and we click join so as you can see it's an external participant so it needs to uh, admit through the lobby now if i go to the user at the bottom i hit join obviously i'm in the meeting and now i've got this new layout i can see my video from my desktop client that's me in little chilly hotel i can admit people so it's a nice user interface now again same what we have in the point-to-point -point call very much replicating the desktop client so i can admit conference room adams and we're in the call there so now let's bring in uh, another room And another one. There we go. So we have four people in the call, five including the, the host. So what's different about this? Um, so we still have our Cortana button in the bottom corner. So we can do some voice actions. Let's just jump to the system first where we've got our layout. So we can see we've got gallery, that's our normal view. We would have large gallery and together mode if there are other participants joining. As you can see, we also have a reaction icon. So this is not in the point to point call. So this is something that is only for Microsoft Teams meetings on the center of room console. So if you want to applaud someone during, during a meeting, obviously you can then see those reactions sent to the other room. So it comes through who sent it, as you saw in the middle there, conference rooms Adams looking at my Peloton bike. That was there, and that showed you who uh, gave that emotional reaction. And then in the call as well, obviously we've still got the same options. We've got the chat bubbles, so you can disable that, enable that. We've got the room control. So that's the main features, uh, the differences between a point-to-point -point call and a meeting. But also, when I click on, say, conference room Adams, I can spotlight that person. Remember, you can't do that in a point-to-point -point call because there's only one of you. So you can't spotlight. Um, or if I go to um, meeting room number two, for example, I can pin that for my self-viewing as well. So again, the difference between um, pin and spotlight. Spotlight is for everyone. It does it for the whole meeting. Pinning is just for your, your room. So that'll just make that change. So for example, if I pin uh, room number two, 
you'll see that layout will change just for me. That doesn't change it for everyone else. And you get a little notification next to the microphone that it's pinned. Whereas if I unpin that, and let's pin um, my desktop, say. I want to pin that, oh sorry, I want to spotlight that for everyone. And it does tell you, this will highlight and spotlight the room for everyone. Here we go, we'll spotlight that. And there we have spotlight. So every single room, every single person, whether you're mobile or however you've connected, you will get that view on there. And again, on the roster list, you can see who is spotlighted. Now, what you can do is spotlight a number of people. So we can add this user to the spotlight as well. So again, if you've got a group of presenters, you're able to spotlight those two together. There we go. Quite scary. Now seeing five of me, even more on the side. So that's what we have in the meeting room. And again, if you wanted to share content, let's add that in as well. What you then have is the ability to share, just like you did in a point-to-point -point call. You can share your content wherever that is from. So we will hit the share button and we can then see my desktop coming through. So that overtakes the spotlight, but what's really nice is down the side are the two main spotlighted people as well. So that's really cool. That's something I really like. There we have the ability to see the desktop client. So that's nice and simple from my Windows 11 laptop plugged in a USB-C cable and I'm sharing content in the room. Obviously I can do it wirelessly with casting. Again, while it's in a call, I can overtake this. Let's jump back to the Teams meeting. And I want to share. And let's share a photo. And let's see what else we had from uh, Oxford last week. Start presenting there. And again, that replaces everyone's uh, content. But again, the nice layout on the uh, side there as well of the spotlight people. And again, what we can do is turn off that spotlight, stop spotlighting, and the layout will change. So you've got full control from the center of room. Now you don't get that if you have some interrupt service. This is only available on native Microsoft Teams rooms. Just remember there's some different features just because you can get into the meeting. Doesn't mean you can have all these rich features, closed captioning, etc. and uh, these great features that you expect from your Microsoft Teams uh, meeting. Thanks very much for watching. Any questions, drop them in the comments below and let me know. See you soon.